Hello, Dumelang, San Bonani, Molueni, and a warm welcome to the Maths Genius Video Tutorial Series brought to you by SABC Education. In these tutorials, we help you unleash the mathematical genius in you by showing you key mathematical concepts and how you can master them for success like a true genius. Today we're going to be talking about the addition of fractions. As you know, a fraction has got two segments, it's got two parts, right? Where it, it is written as A over B, where your A, the number on top, is called the numerator, and the number at the bottom is called the denominator. So, any number that can be represented as A over B is a fraction. And as you know from the properties of rational numbers, they are the ones that can be written as A over B. So when you think of fractions, think of rational numbers. So for example, let's say we have 1 over 2, right? This is a fraction. And let's say we have 5 over 6. That is also a fraction because it can be represented in the form of a numerator and a denominator. So our focus now is to look at the addition of fractions. The addition of fractions. So I'll use a few examples to just illustrate how you should add fractions, right? So the first example, right, is one over two, right? So I'll say number one, one over two plus two over two. One half plus two halves. So, for you to be able to add fractions, you have to achieve one thing initially. And that one thing is that the denominators of the two have to be the same. They have to be equal. In this case, it is easy because we have two and two. So, if the denominator is the same, you maintain it. And it's a simple case of adding the numerators. I'll repeat that. To add fractions, the denominators have to be the same. And if they're the same, then it's just a case of adding the numerators. In this case, it would be one, right, that one, plus that one, two, which is three over two. That's your sum. And in this case, it is written as an improper fraction because when the numerator is bigger than the denominator, then it's called an improper fraction. I'll just put a bubble there and say improper fraction, right? Meaning that the denominator is smaller than the numerator. But if it's this case where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, then it's called a proper fraction. So this is a proper fraction. Right? So the question might say, leave your answer as a mixed fraction. That means that whenever you have an improper fraction, when the denominator is bigger, I mean when the numerator is bigger than the denominator, then you have to write it as a mixed fraction. To, and this is how you do it. How many times can two go into three? It's only once, right? Once. So if it goes in once, what is the remainder? It's three minus two, which is? one. So it will be one out of two. So now if it's in this form, we call it a mixed fraction. So I'll just put a bubble again. Okay, oops. Another bubble there and say this is a mixed fraction. Just to recap, 
Fractions can be proper fractions, where the numerator is smaller than the denominator, or can be improper fractions, where the numerator is bigger than the denominator, or can be mixed fractions. Okay, so what we have looked at is a case where we are adding two fractions and the denominator is the same. If the denominator is the same, then we add the numerators and we get our answer. What about if the, the denominators are different, right? For example, example number two, one over three plus four over six. Now you've got a situation now where you've got one third plus four sixth. And we said the only way, the only way you can add two fractions is if their denominators are the same. So that is what we have to first of all try and achieve, to say, are they the same? Three and six, that's not the same. So we have to come up with a strategy to see how we can make the two denominators the same. If I look at it, I know that three and six are actually related. Uh, and in my mind, using my multiplication and division, I know that if I multiply three times two, I will get six. So that is how, that is my strategy. That is how I am going to make these denominators the same. Right, so if I say times two, like that, right? So that means that this will become a six. But now, that means it's now one over six. And one over six is not necessarily equal to one over three. So there is a golden rule with fractions. What you do to the denominator, make sure you also do to the numerator, such that it maintains its value. Right? So because we've multiplied the, numer the denominator by two, we should also multiply the numerator by two. Like that, it means that we have achieved two things. We have achieved the same denominator and we have maintained equivalent fractions. We have maintained the value of the fraction. So I'm going to rewrite it now. Two times one will give me two over three times two, which is six what we wanted, plus four over six, which is equal to, because now the denominator is the same, I can move on to just simply add the numerator. So I'm gonna write down my denominator, two plus four, right, like that, which is equal to six over six, right? How many times does six go into itself? once, right? So the answer here would be one. So I've added these two fractions, meaning that one third, which is equivalent to two sixths, right? Plus four over six will give me one whole. So that is how you add fractions. No matter how difficult or how easy a, a, a fraction looks right if you're supposed to add them the first thing to achieve is to say are the denominators the same if they're same yes then simply add the numerators and you are good to go so number three the last example for adding fractions right is let's say you're given two over three plus three out of five right Remember here it was easy because the relationship between three and six, we could just simply say three times two will give us six. Therefore, they were equal. What about in a situation like this now, where you have three and five? Three and five. Five is not a multiple of three. Three is not a factor of five. So that means that we need to be very, very clever in trying to achieve our objective of making the denominators the same. The easiest way that will work for, for you every time without thinking too much is to say, what is the multiple of these two? If I multiply these two, what answer do I get? So if I say three times five, right? 
I'm going to get 15. So 15 to me is the number that I am guaranteed that it's a multiple of three and it's also a multiple of five. Because I know yes, they teach you to find the lowest common multiple, but it's always easier to get the product of the two and then simplify later, right? So that's, that's what we're doing here. So we're going to use 15 as our common uh, denominator, right? So that they have to be the same. So 15, for me to get 15 here, I have to say times five. What I do to the denominator, I also do to the numerator. So this will be times five. And then I come here for me to get 15, I have to say times three times three, like that. So rewriting it, it would be two times five, that's 10, over three times five, it's what? 15 plus three times three, which is nine, over 15. Right, so we've, we've achieved one objective, to make the denominators the same. Now, it's an easy case of adding the numerators, which is gonna be, okay, there's our denominator, 10 plus nine, which is 19. So 19 over 15, that is the sum of two over three plus three over five. So, depending on how you've been asked to uh, answer the question, are you supposed to leave it as an improper fraction or mixed fraction? So in this case, how many times does 15 go into 19? It will be once, and what will be our remainder? Four out of 15. So that would be our final mixed fraction answer. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Unleash your mathematical genius today. If you have any maths questions, you can post them for free on www.mathsgenius.co.za or email them to info at mathsgenius.co.za.